Now we will continue with some examples of reciprocal lattices. So here we have a one-dimensional direct lattice, lattice constant A. Then in the reciprocal lattice we also have a one-dimensional lattice with lattice constant 2 pi over A. If we have a rectangular lattice in the direct lattice which has sides A and B in the reciprocal lattice, this will be another rectangular lattice with uh, side lengths 2 pi over b and 2 pi over a. And if you go through the exercise for simple cubic, body-centered cubic, face-centered cubic and hexagonal closed-back structures, we find that the reciprocal lattice for simple cubic is simple cubic, body-centered cubic is face-centered cubic, face-centered cubic is body-centered cubic, and hexagonal closed-back is hexagonal closed-back. Now, <clears throat> there were two remarks we made about the reciprocal lattice. The reciprocal lattice vector GHKL is normal to the HKL plane of the direct lattice and the distance between parallel HKL planes is 2 pi divided by the magnitude of the reciprocal lattice vector G sub HKL. So, uh, First, let's show that the reciprocal lattice vector is normal to the HKL plane of the direct lattice. So for this, let's consider the plane HKL which intercepts axes at points X, Y and Z given in units of A, B and C. So you can see that we have a plane here, that's this triangle, uh, and that has the intercepts X, Y and Z. And this is the uh, y-axis, this is the x-axis, this is the z-axis and uh, you can see some lattice points here and the primitive translation vectors a, b and c are shown. So by the definition of Miller indices we can always find these intercepts such that h, k and l values correspond to 1 over x, 1 over y and 1 over z. So uh, Therefore, this 1 over x is h, 1 over y is k, 1 over z is k, uh, l. Now, uh, in order to define a plane, we know that we need two non-collinear vectors lying in this plane. And so here we choose two such vectors. The, the one in uh, purple is uh, u and the one in dark green is v. So these vectors, as you can see from the setup here, are given by uh, yb minus xa. So these values x, y and z were given in units of a, b and c. So the vector uh, runs from uh, xa to uh, yb. So it's yb minus xa. And vector v on the other hand runs from uh, cz uh, to yb. So it is yb minus uh, zc. Okay, so to show that this uh, reciprocal lattice vector GHKL is perpendicular to the HKL plane, we need to show that the reciprocal lattice vector GHKL KL is perpendicular to these two non-collinear vectors U and V. So U dot G must be 0 and V dot G must be 0. So let's check U dot G. So U is YB minus XA, that product with our GHKL, which is H capital A plus K capital B plus L capital C. And the dot product uh, between A and uh, capital A and B gives us uh, a zero. However, with the capital B and lowercase b uh, vectors, we have a dot product which is equal to 2 pi. So it is 2 pi, uh, 2 pi times yk. And uh, the dot product between B and C gives us 0. The dot product between A and A gives us uh, minus 2 pi xh. Uh, so because we have a minus sign here. And then looking at yk, where y is 1 over k, and xh, where x is 1 over h, we see that this dot product is 0. And we can show similarly for v dot g, the dot product is 0. So uh, it is 2 pi yk minus zl this time because we have the c vectors dot product. Therefore, we find that this ghkl vector, the reciprocal lattice vector, is perpendicular to the hkl plane. Now the second remark was that the distance between two parallel hkl planes 
can be found as 2 pi divided by magnitude of the GHKL vector. Um, so, in order to show this, first of all, I want to remind you from the previous uh, proof that we have already shown GHKL vector is perpendicular to the HKL plane, and the nearest plane parallel to the HKL plane uh, goes through the origin. So the interplanar distance is the projection of one of the vectors x, a, y, b, or z, c to the direction normal to the HKL plane. So if, if you look at the projection of x, a, uh, or y, b, or z, c to the uh, g vector, g, h, k, l, you find the perpendicular distance, basically. So uh, let's find that. The, the vector that is normal to this plane is the magnitude of g h k l divided by uh, a g h k l vector divided by its magnitude. Therefore, the distance between the plane, the parallel plane that goes through the origin and the h k l plane is uh, the projection of x a vector onto this unit uh, normal vector. And x a dot g h k l gives us 2 pi x h. Uh, divided by magnitude of GHKL, where x was 1 over h, so it is 2 pi divided by magnitude of GHKL. Now, we had a similar result uh, before for a cubic lattice. So if you look at uh, this, what this result is for a cubic lattice, g vector is h uh, 2 pi over a i hat plus k 2 pi over a j hat plus l 2 pi over a k hat, so if you look at its magnitude, you find that it is 2 pi over a square root h square plus k square plus l square. Therefore, the distance between two parallel planes in the cubic lattice will be a divided by square root h square plus k square plus l square. So this is a result we're familiar with. So if we go back to um, our uh, derivation of this, so early on, we talked about uh, the distance between um, parallel planes. So that was showing, uh, shown using the uh, Miller indices for a cubic crystal where we have A, B, C. And you can see the same thing we did before. Uh, using the law of cosines, we have shown that the distance uh, between uh, the uh, parallel HKL planes uh, the, was given by a divided by square root a square plus k square plus l square. Okay, so uh, let's continue uh, with the von Lau formulation of diffraction condition. Now, uh, we have already talked about uh, Bragg's law. Bragg's law says that if you have two parallel planes at a, a, with a distance d between the planes, 2d sine theta equals to uh, order of interference times lambda gives us the uh, constructive interference condition. Now we consider a crystal made out of identical microscopic objects. It could be set of ions or atoms uh, that is at a lattice point. So these are placed at the lattice sites. Uh, R of a with position vector R of a Bravais lattice, and each of uh, these uh, groups of objects, ions or atoms, can re radiate the incident radiation in all directions. And obviously, we will have sharp peaks observed when we have constructive interference. So, here we're looking at two lattice points that can re radiate the incident radiation. So, the uh, incoming uh, rays are shown with the wave vector k here and there is a, a norm, uh, unit vector n hat which is in the direction of k and between these lattice points I have the position vector of one lattice point with respect to the other d and the angle the k makes with uh, the vector d is theta and uh, with uh, the, the angle between d and the reflected vector k prime is theta prime. And I call the um, unit vector in the direction of k prime n hat prime. Now, the question is, what is the path difference between these two rays, k and k prime? So I need to drop a perpendicular to find this extra path traveled. 
So part of it comes from uh, this side. So here I have an extra uh, distance traveled and part of it comes from uh, this side. So here I have uh, d cosine theta prime which is d vector dot product with n hat prime and then here I have d cosine uh, theta which is minus d vector dot product with n hat because n hat uh, and the projection of d on, on the k vector are pointing in opposite directions. Okay, so the wave vector k is 2 pi n hat over lambda and the wave vector k prime is 2 pi n hat prime over lambda assuming that I have elastic scattering. So basically the wavelength uh, does not change in this process. So uh, the total path difference d cosine theta plus d cosine theta prime is d dot product n hat prime minus n hat as we have seen here. So we have the, the two rays parallel to each other and going through the same distance uh, here and here, but in the, uh, there's a path difference that is developing during uh, the travel of the extra travel of the uh, vector k to hit the, the bottom point and also k prime. So uh, the condition for constructive interference will be the path difference should be an integer multiple of wavelength. So d dot product n hat prime minus n hat is n lambda. So if I take this equation and multiply both sides by 2 pi over lambda, I find that I have d dot product k prime vector minus k vector should be equal to 2 pi n. Um, so these all lattice vectors, lattice sites are displaced from one another by lattice translation vectors. The condition that all scattered rays interfere constructively is the lattice translation vector r dot product with k prime minus k is equal to 2 pi m. So d is a lattice translation vector. Uh, it's, uh, it's a vector r. So multiply both sides with uh, complex number i square root of minus 1 and take the exponential we find that on the right hand side I get e to the i 2 pi m which is 1 so uh, on the left hand side I have e to the i a vector dot product with a lattice translation vector equals to 1 that is by definition the reciprocal lattice vector g so we arrive at the conclusion that the constructive interference will occur if the change in the wave vector k prime minus k is g a reciprocal lattice vector so this for now condition for the uh, constructive interference uh, can be expressed in several different ways the first one we have already I talked about delta k is equal to j now if i do some math on this k prime minus k is equal to g uh, if i take the square of this equation i get k prime dot product with k prime that's k prime magnitude squared is equal to g dot product with g g squared plus 2 g dot product with k plus k squared since k and k prime have the same magnitude we have the same uh, wavelength elastic scattering they will cancel so I will arrive at the conclusion g square plus 2 g dot k is equal to 0 so that's another von Lau condition or the equivalent von Lau condition now if g is a reciprocal lattice vector minus g is also a reciprocal lattice vector so this same condition uh, can be written as g square minus 2 g dot k is equal to 0 so g square is equal to 2 g dot k. Now I can separate uh, g vector as g vector is equal to the magnitude g pointing in the g hat direction. So uh, with that, the magnitude of g uh, cancels one of the magnitudes of g on the left hand side and I reach the conclusion. So this one cancels this one. k dot g hat is equal to g over 2. So if you... It, work in the reciprocal lattice from if you go from uh, point O to point K in the reciprocal lattice um, we have the wave vector K uh, must point in such a way that uh, the wave vector K and K prime will uh, intersect uh, at a plane that is uh, going through the middle of the reciprocal lattice so K dot product with the G vector 
a g hat vector must be equal to g over 2. So here you see the projection of the k vector onto the g vector is equal to g over 2. The same thing is true for k prime. So that's what it means. And this plane that these uh, uh, wave vectors must be uh, going through is called the Bragg plane. Okay, so an incident wave vector k will satisfy the von Lau condition if and only if the tip of the vector lies in a plane that is perpendicular to the bisector of a line joining the origin of k space to a reciprocal lattice point k. And that line will contain a reciprocal lattice vector g. So this uh, plane that goes right through the middle of this uh, line is called the Bragg plane. So such k space planes are called Bragg planes. And uh, as a last uh, way of formulating von Lau condition, if you take delta k is equal to g equation and take a dot product of this equation with a, b, or c, you will find that a dot delta k is equal to 2 pi h, b dot delta k is 2 pi k, c dot delta k is 2 pi l, with our reciprocal lattice vector h a plus k b plus l c, and this a, b, c vectors were found as 2 pi b cross c divided by volume of the unit cell a dot b cross c, etc. And we had uh, cyclic permutations of this, remember, so a, b, c. So for a vector we do b cross c, for b vector we do c cross a, for c vector we do a cross b, etc. Uh, so